All right, folks, I'm going to try to do this speaking. As many of you know, I've been battling cancer for, well, all this year. And uh, it's really painful to talk and hard for me to talk, which is why the video is slowed down. Thank God for drugs. Um, I've been on morphine and Oxycontin for well, five or six weeks now. Um, there's been some weeks I can't talk at all other than short sentences. I want to give a thank you to my sister and my mom and my stepdad who's basically been running this place while I've been unable to. Uh, taking care of all the animals, helping me get stuff done. And, you know, when you have an operational homestead, everything still needs to get done. And I don't feel horribly bad today, so I'm going to go ahead and knock this project out. It's one thing I get asked about a lot. What I have right here in this first raised bed is a fig tree. Now I'm in zone 6B, and fig trees don't really do very well here. Um, our winter temperatures get down below 20 degrees, and that will flat out kill a fig tree. But this is what I do to keep it alive. You can see I got other trees next to it. These are pawpaws. Those back here are pawpaws. They do just fine. But if you notice this fig tree, once winter got here, I put this garden fence around it. I believe it's a two by four fence, about three feet tall. And it's held together uh, with tie straps as soon as I find them. So it's just wrapped around and tie strapped together around the raised bed and it's almost tall enough to get to the top of this fig. It's, it's short about two or three inches, that's okay. So once the figs start to die back, which usually happens after you get one or two frosts, the leaves will start to look like this. And if you notice, I got a bell of straw sitting here and I'm gonna go ahead and open up this bell of straw and we're gonna fill this up with straw. That provides the insulation this tree needs in order to make it through winter. I gotta open up this knife. It's actually a Leatherman style CS that has scissors on it. One of my favorite things on hiking, it also works great for things like this too. So now that I got that opened up, we're basically going to fluff up this straw and fill this up. And I'm going to have to do this one-handed because I'm holding the phone with the other one in order to record this for you. Let me go ahead and get this done and I'll bring you back. Okay, so now I got this done. <clears throat> the one thing you want to look at, make sure you don't have any huge gaps anywhere around it. Make sure that your straw goes above whatever the tallest branch is. Push it down, make sure it's packed in there pretty good. It used about three quarters of a bale of straw, which is about $3, maybe $3.50. That's cheap insurance to make sure that your figs are going to fruit next year because figs will only fruit on previous year's growth or older wood. So it won't generally fruit on new growth. Sometimes they will, sometimes they don't. The uh, Marcellus fig that I have does, but Chicago Hardy figs won't. So that's a quick tip to help you get your figs through winter time if they're not suitable for your zone. That will also work for other trees um, that aren't suitable for your zone too. Um, so just a helpful tip. You know, I probably got counting the, the fence 
you know, nine feet of fence and a bale of straw I probably got with some wire ties. I probably got 10 bucks in this. Cheap insurance to make sure I got figs. Next, we're going to do this one over here, which is a much taller fig. And it has two layers of fence on it, so we'll go over and start. As you can tell, this fig tree is much taller. It's actually, the fence is taller than me. The uh, tallest leaves are probably about five foot tall. The fence is about six feet tall. Also, instead of using wire ties, we just bent the exposed metal over to stack these two fences on top of each other. Worked out pretty good. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and fill this up with straw. I have a full bale and probably a quarter of another bale. We're going to hope that gets me through this. Um, because I'm doing this one-handed, i got to hold on to this cell phone. I'll go ahead and stop it now, and we'll bring it back when it's done. Basically, you're going to take the hay, fluff it up, put it in there, make sure it's packed in there good and tight. Make sure it covers at least to the tops of that branch right there. That'll protect it through winter and ensure that you have fig fruit next year. So if you almost get done and you find things like this, if you look real close, there's a branch right there that the tip is pretty close to the edge and it's exposed. What you do is you take a handful and you just shove it in there. You, this method that I'm using may not save every single limb, but it'll save 90% of the tree through winter. The important thing is, is just try to save as much as you can because otherwise it's going to freeze and get killed back all the way to the ground. And if it gets killed back all the way to the ground, you'll have zero fig fruit. And not only that, the, uh, the tree will be uh, weakened and it won't be as prolific as if it was if it actually made it through winter. So just do your best to cover up as much as you can. Now I've done lost where it was at. Oh, here it is. And uh, just do the best that you can and hope and pray that you can save at least 10% of the tree or, you know, that you can save 90% of the tree. Just try to do as much as you can and hope you can save at least 90% of the tree and uh, that'll get you a pretty good start in spring. Now what I do in spring when the chance of frost ends, and watch out for those late season frost, um, the fig tree won't fruit really until about June anyways. So you can leave this on a couple weeks even after your last frost. But basically what I do, I come out, I lift the fence up over the planter. I just let the straw fall on the ground. And then I put the straw either in my compost pile or in my garden raised beds and it'll decompress and provide nutrients for those plants. I got a little bit to finish up in the top. I'm going to go ahead and knock this out. Um, one thing I want to say, I appreciate all the people who have been supporting me through my YouTube channel during this time when I've got cancer. A lot of people have come out, told me they were sending me their prayers. I really appreciate it more than you can realize. Hold on a minute, I got spit. <coughs> I really appreciate it more than you can realize. And with that being said, um, I want to uh, let you all know if you are getting started with a homestead or you just have a homestead in planning or you have a full-blown homestead, I want to wish you well, especially in these uncertain times. And God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your homesteads. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Much love.